Hi, I'm Matt Bailey, and these are your weekend notes for December 12th, 2020. Our top story this week, Taylor Swift has done it again. She surprise dropped Evermore, her second album of the year at midnight Eastern on December 11th, two days before the country-turned-pop star celebrates her 31st birthday. The project is her ninth studio album and sister companion to her first surprise release in late July, the record-breaking Folklore. The pop star shared the surprise release on social media Thursday, December 10th. As with Folklore, Swift teamed with producers and songwriters Jack Antonoff, Aaron Desner, Justin Vernon, and her boyfriend Jason Alwyn, who is credited on both projects as William Bowery. Now, much like Folklore, the standard edition of Evermore will feature 15 tracks, while the deluxe physical edition will contain two bonus tracks, Right Where You Left Me and It's Time to Go. All digital downloads of the album will include an exclusive digital booklet with 16 brand new photos. The music video for the album's first single, Willow, is available now. Time Magazine has named K-pop superstars BTS the 2020 Entertainer of the Year. The news was revealed ahead of the 2020 Time Person of the Year announcement that made its broadcast debut on NBC this week, which also featured an exclusive performance of Dynamite by BTS. Now, there's no doubt this band has earned it. The monumental year saw BTS make Billboard history by becoming the first Korean act Korean pop act, I should say, to top the Billboard Hot 100 chart with Dynamite, making its debut at number one. It's a feat they kept for two consecutive weeks before reclaiming the top spot after dropping to second only for a week. The group did it again with its latest single, Life Goes On. BTS is the first duo or group in history to have two number one Hot 100 debut songs and breaks the tie with Megan The Stallion, for most weeks at number one on Billboard's digital song sales in 2020. A special holiday remix of Dynamite is now available. The group will round out 2020 with a headlining performance at 2021 New Year's Eve live presented by Weverse. The virtual concert starts at 9.30 p.m. Korean time, 7 a.m. Eastern time on December 31st. And I know UK pop BTS stands will be there at 7.30 in the morning. I know who you are. I see you. You're going to go crazy. You're going to be up early for that concert. The concert will feature Halsey, Lauv, and Steve Aoki. Tickets are on sale now. Keeping in line with New Year's celebrations, Justin Bieber and T-Mobile are hosting a blowout live stream concert to kick off the new year. Now, I did not know this, but this event marks Bieber's first live show since 2017. Fans across the globe can tune in to T-Mobile Presents New Year's Eve Live with Justin Bieber Thursday, December 31st, starting at 10.15 p.m. Eastern, 7.15 p.m. Pacific. Now, those of you that are getting up early to watch BTS, you're going to have to stay up late because the cannot miss performance begins at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. T-Mobile customers can score free access to the live stream concert through the T-Mobile Tuesdays app or by heading to justinbiebernye.com while everyone else can purchase access for $25 to the unforgettable experience. You know, I never thought I'd be applying for virtual press confer, uh, virtual press tickets, but I think I'm just going to have to apply and see if we can get in and cover that one. Now, KISS is also getting in on the New Year's live streaming game. It's been 296 days since the KISS stage went dark. Roaring back to life and proving that KISS never does anything small, the iconic Rock and Roll Hall of Fame multi-platinum selling band has announced the biggest concert event of the year, sending off 2020 in KISS style on New Year's Eve at iconic destination Atlantis, the Palm in Dubai. Landmarks Live Presents is set to deliver the largest KISS show of the band's storied career, live from the Royal Beach at Atlantis, Dubai, with numerous world record attempts for largest ever pyro display. Filmed with more than 50 cameras and 360 degree views, the show will be filmed in 4K and can be seen globally with a 1080p live stream and will be available on any computer, mobile, and Apple TV. Now, if you want my opinion, 
They shouldn't resume touring in 2021. It was their farewell tour. They're going to do this. They should just do it and get out. That's an awesome, that's an awesome way to end a career. But you know what? We'll be great to see them live next year. Avenue Beats, Ode to the Year, F2020, tops the New York Times prestigious Best Songs of 2020 list. Now, this is just great because the song became a viral sensation on TikTok after the trio of Sammy Bearden, Savannah Santos, and Sam Backoff released the track earlier this year. The list, compiled by lead critic John Perellis, who calls the track's powerful statements, memorable hooks, sees BTS's Dynamite come in at number two and Ashley McBride's One Night Standards in at number three. Can't believe the viral TikTok song made number one. That's actually pretty cool because it, it's, it's what we're all feeling. Live Nation president Joe Birchtold has some good news for us. He expects live shows to fully return outdoors by summer of 2021. Birch told tells CNBC News that a lot of progress towards fighting COVID-19 with vaccines is helping secure the return of live music worldwide at full capacity. Live Nation, which is the world's largest concert promoter, lost 98% of its income due to the pandemic. Now that translates to more than $431 million of revenue. Why should we care? Because that means some of that revenue doesn't go to the artists. And the artists, as we've chronicled both here and on the Music Universe podcasts, are out of work and out of money. Their, that income is how they make their money, not through record sales with this digital tier, that we're, this digital world that we live in and the way that's tiered. A combined 4,000 shows and festivals have actually been rescheduled for 2021 with 86% of fans holding on to their tickets and two thirds holding on to festival passes. Now that is great. That shows that those fans are really, really dedicated and I love to see that. Legendary singer songwriter Don McLean is celebrating the 50th anniversary of his seminal album, American Pie, with a special show honoring Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, and the Big Bopper. McLean will perform at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake, Iowa on the day the music died, February 3rd, 2021 to kick off his American Pie 50th anniversary world tour. The date marks the 62nd anniversary of the 1950 plane crash that killed the American rock and roll musicians, and the Surf Ballroom is the last venue they played before their tragic demise. Tickets are on sale now. I can tell Buddy wrote this next story. Drum Workshop is honoring Nirvana drummer and Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl with his own custom iconic snare drum. The limited edition drum celebrates his drumming career as well as his long-standing connection with both the legendary Sound City Recording Studio in Los Angeles and his beloved Studio 606 where the sacred Sound City console now resides. I'd like to thank everyone at DW because this is something that uh, blows my mind. I've never had my own signature snare drum before, and this is pretty beautiful. The snare features wood inlay artwork with the rock visionary's stylized silhouette, his forearm feather tattoos, and a fitting tribute to both aforementioned recording studios. Precisely laser cut from black pear and sycamore woods, the images are painstakingly hand inlaid into the background of the teal dyed exotic bird's eye maple. The drum is only hand sprayed with a clear gloss to top coat. No paint has been used to depict the graphics on the outer veneer. Nickel-plated drum hardware complements the unique eye-catching color scheme. It's made from North American hard rock maple and fitted with the right hardware for playing. It also features a deluxe DW carrying case, certificate of authenticity, and Sound City hat. Only 250 are being produced, and I know that is drummer porn to Music Universe editor-in-chief Buddy Yan. Universal Music Publishing Group has acquired Bob Dylan's entire catalog. This landmark agreement encompasses more than 600 copyrights spanning 60 years, including 1962's cultural milestone, Blowin' in the Wind, and this year's epic, Murder Most Foul. 
Dylan's songs have been recorded more than 6,000 times by an array of artists representing dozens of countries, cultures, and genres. Financial terms of the sale haven't been revealed, but it's rumored to be worth 300 to 400 million dollars. Happy retirement, Bob Dylan, I guess. The Royal Mint has launched a commemorative co coin celebrating the career of one David Bowie. The coin is the third in the Royal Mint's Music Legends collection and follows coins in honor of Queen and Elton John. The Bowie coin celebrates Rock's definitive chameleon with a design inspired by an image of Bowie from his time spent living and recording in Berlin. The coin's design includes the iconic lightning bolt motif from Aladdin Sane and captures Bowie's career journey. The company also sent the coin into space, orbiting Earth's atmosphere for 45 minutes before safely descending back to Britain. It's the first time a UK coin has been sent out of this world. Now, country power couple T.G. Shepard and his wife Kelly Lang are guests this week on the Music Universe podcast. Join us as we chat about their joint Christmas single, Christmas in Mexico, how they're celebrating the holidays, and what's ahead. Those are your weekend notes for December 12th, 2020. And the final episode for 2020, we will return in January. Keep checking out Buddy Jan and me on the Music Universe podcast, where next week is dedicated to our trip to Nashville during our Live from Nashville series with special in-person guests, Tim and Roxanne Atwood, J.D. Shelburne, Chapel Heart, and Flo. They all join us from Nashville Coffees across from the Opryland Hotel. Thanks to Nashville Coffees for having us. We also welcome back songwriter Kent Blasey to the podcast in a special phone interview to discuss his 2020 induction into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, which will be celebrated next year in November as part of the 5051 Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Signing off, I'm Matt Bailey. Stay safe, have a great weekend, and remember, Merry Christmas means we love you from the music universe. See you in the new year. <laughs>